Welcome to Gold Derby. I'm senior editor Denton Davidson here with Tani Cypress, who plays Thaisa in Showtime's Yellow Jackets. Tani, things are getting wild in Thaisa's world this season. Um, she's oh, a state yeah. senator now, and in the first episode, she goes down in the basement, finds that dog altar. There's something sinister going on here. We're not we're not totally sure of, of exactly if it's spiritual or a mental break, but what were your thoughts when you saw those scripts coming in for season two? Well, I mean, it's really exciting as an actor to be able to do, you know, something so outside of the box that, um, you know, it feels like it's playing, we're playing, you know? So it's a lot of fun for me uh, reading the scripts. I, you know, it's Thaisa's story is a long run story. So really we're only scratching the surface with her right now. And I'm super excited to see where it goes. I have as many questions as the fans do. <laughs> and so I can't wait to find out uh, what's happening with her. Um, and yeah, they don't tell me, we don't discuss supernatural or, or trauma, you know, this whole argument. Uh, and I think that's for the best. I really think that the creators of the show uh, want to leave it up for interpretation. As a fan, it seems supernatural to me. I don't know. It does. <laughs> I mean, with the symbols and um, it had to be fun just coming back. And you've got this great ensemble of women. What do you enjoy the most about just being on set with these other great actors? Oh, my God. You know, I they hate it when I say I'm low man on the totem pole. And I'm not. I'm not. They don't ever treat me like low man on the totem pole. But like these are legendary actresses. And I've had a long career and I've done well for myself. But, you know, being in the same room as these women is a dream come true. I feel like I've won the lottery. But the best part about being with these women is that we have so much fun together. Uh, when the when the six of us now get together, it's it's just a, it's a laugh a minute. I feel bad for directors for trying to have to mm -hmm. wrangle us, uh, you know, in between takes. We're a mess. <laughs> well, I'm so glad that you're getting your spotlight because, as you've said, you've been in, in supporting roles, an episode here, an episode there, on so many shows. What's this experience been like for you to get a fan response? The way that this, I mean, this has to be a completely different feeling. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, I'm not going to shit on my career. I've, you know, been in the industry for over two decades and um, it's paid my bills <laughs> and it's been great. Uh, but I played a lot of, you know, one dimensional women who uh, run down the street in high heels, chasing bad guys with guns, you know, like it's it's there's no depth to it whatsoever. So to get a character uh, with so so many layers um, and have a story that's just so compelling is, like I said, I feel like I won the lottery. What do you love about playing Taisa the most and what is this role given to you as an actress that's um, I mean, you sort of just mentioned this, but that's different than what you've done before. Uh, first of all, she's like the creepiest one of the bunch, which I think is <laughs> most fun. Uh, so maybe fun. she's not creepy, but she's in creepy situations if she's not herself. You, what do you love playing about playing her? Um, I love that she's despicable. <laughs> yeah. I love that she's this horrible narcissist and She doesn't see that she's a narcissist, obviously, you know, and she's just trying to she's trying to keep her world together from crumbling. But everything she says is from this selfish point of view, which I think is just so really interesting uh, thing to play in somebody, you know, where if you read it one way, it looks like she cares about people. But if you read it in another way, you can just see that it's all self-serving, you know, and I love that about her. Um, I love the creepy stuff. Oh. My Oh my God, I'm a Stephen King mega fan. And so her story is very Stephen King-esque, you know, in the in the creepiness factor and getting to eat the dirt, all that kind of stuff. God, it was it's such a thrill. It's so fun. And let's just talk a little bit about that episode where uh, you call Simone to come and pick up your son and then she gets there and he's not there, but she's been yeah. talking to him <laughs> this whole time. Um, yeah. that's when we really start to see her start to break this season. How do you get in that, in the right headspace to sort of weave back and forth between whether it's like a sleepwalking version of Thaisa or, I mean, cause in, in one moment you're like a total professional. And then the second, yeah. the next you're like a wreck. 
I know. <laughs> uh, poor Thaisa. Um, you know, it, it's really just putting one foot in front of the other and being truthful in the moment. Thaisa has fallen apart. You know, she doesn't know what's going on with her life. So she tries to keep it together as best as she, she can, even when she gets to Lottie's camp and she's not in her clothes. She's she looks more like, you know, a van than herself. And she's she's a sort of a shadow of who she used to be. She still tries everything within her within her to be poised and um and 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 tall, keep herself tall. Um so it's really just fighting through uh the the fogginess that she has. And there's a lot of discussion with the creators of the show on this other tie and uh what she's like and um is she evil and does she like our tie or does she hate our tie and all this sorts of stuff. So um the other tie was very I guess technically discussed between me and Jasmine and the creators of the show. And it's interesting because we don't know exactly what her problem is, but I, so you don't really know either then in terms no, of acting, I, whether it's like, if she's going like in a psychosis or if it's right. some sort of demon. Well, I will say that I lean away from psychosis with this character because I, I think, you know, disassociative, identity disorder, I think is what it's called, DID, uh, is is a very specific, and it's real. It's a real thing. And I don't want to feign to know what that's like or or try to portray that in this way, which is not, I don't think it's a proper uh, representation. So I don't think that that's, we never brought up a psychosis. We never talked about her disassociating with herself and this sort of thing. So um, I, I lean a, away from that. That's why I guess as a fan, I look at it more as something supernatural. Um, yeah. But, you know, they don't tell me shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's just like a senator hitchhiking down the highway. Okay, and... in my defense, though, <laughs> in the show's defense, because I know this is a big question, like, what the fuck, you know? Hasn't anybody checked into the office? Uh, it's been a days. It's been days since she's won the election, not weeks. She hasn't even been sworn in yet. So this is sort of the lapse period between take, getting the job and, and, and starting the job. So I will also say that, I mean, current people in Congress in real life are doing just as weird of things. Like it's so uh, true. <laughs> so it's, it's not. So, and, it's really not I, that bizarre. No, but, it's not. But and she state does. Senator is a, is a small position. It's really not that big a position. So yeah, you know. So I mean, but she does take this trip, and then we see yeah. adult band for the first time. So that's exciting that you sort of get to bring in that. Um, what are you kidding? Like to, to bring into they that. They treat me character. so well. They give me such good acting partners. It's crazy. Uh, working with Lauren was amazing. When I found out she got the part, I was thrilled. That's the only person that us old ladies were talking about getting the part. We were like, well, I hope it's Lauren Ambrose. Huh? And then she got it and it was great. Um, and working with her, I mean, she's she's a consummate actor. You know, she's a, she's from the stage. I'm from the stage. So we worked really, we, we spoke the same sort of language and it was a, it was a wonderful, I, I, it was thrilling, you know, and I, as a fan of the show, I wanted to see adult Ty and adult Van get together. You know, I love what Jasmine and Liv have done with the, with the roles. And I'm excited to see what happens now because we just saw all of these adult women yeah. get back together on Lottie's compound. Lottie's all adult Lottie's the first we've seen of her this season as well. And that her and Taisa are interesting because they're, if anyone else is a little off, it's Lottie. Like, so I'm interested to see how those two um, interact with each other and how the group right. interacts with each other. What can fan? I mean, no spoilers, obviously, but you know, what can fans look forward to? Oh my God. We spent a lot of time together. <laughs> uh, it's, you know, our our butts went numb uh, shooting scenes together. That's it, it was just hours and hours and hours of us being together in a small room. So fans are going to see all of that interaction. And the fact is, is that, um, you know, I think first season you could see um, the the old friendships, you know, especially between like Ty and Shauna, you could see that friendship that that lasted through all those years and the love that's down deep for, for each other. Um, and this season, it's really about um, confronting 
realize the the um the things that we've kept from each other uh, our griefs with one another so it, things fall apart a bit you know when did you decide you wanted to be an actress when did that bug sort of get you oh that's a great question um i always was a um a, a creative kid uh dance and chorus and da 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 but when i got to uh, high school uh, my brother was big man on campus on the football team and my sister was head cheerleader. And uh, I came in as the third Cyprus, the, the young Cyprus. And everybody's like, what are you going to do? I was like, I don't know. Maybe I'll join drama. And as soon as I got on stage, I was like, I'm never leaving. <laughs> I'm home. <laughs> and so, yeah, uh, I guess freshman year of high school is when it really clicked. So it started on stage, but then how did you get to Hollywood? Oh, oh gosh. Um, well, I only did a few stage productions after college. I did off, 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 like down at the Bowery Theater. <laughs> and uh, and I happened to my last night of performance, uh, my manager, my soon to be manager um, saw me and signed me. And then I started doing, you know, commercials, which led to guest spots, which led to recurring. I every step up the ladder I took uh, in my career. And then I remember I went back to audition for theater and I walked in and he's like, oh, you're the television actress. And I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's over. <laughs> yeah, so I think it happened have... without me. I didn't want, I, not that I wanted it to happen. It just happened. I think we have a, a common love for the Golden Girls. Um... Yeah. If you were in a reboot of the Golden Girls, which one Blanche. of them do you want to play? Blanche. Is that because you're the most Blanche. like Blanche or the least like Blanche? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, I would say I would say I was the most like Blanche, actually, you know? Uh, sure of myself, sure of what I got to show the world. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, a little, little whippersnapper. Why was that one of your favorite shows? It's so comforting. I mean, they really did... Um, break uh boundaries um they 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 you know when the first started they had that gay um chef that lived with them and and then uh you know they've had lo a lot of queer characters on the show over the years um Blanche's brother uh the the, the friend of Rose's best friend nope not Rose's best friend whose best friend was it I can't remember, uh, but yes, and that to me that you know there was there was nothing like that on television, um, and they were just snazzy, snappy, snazzy women. You know, I also love designing women; they uh, <laughs> they're wonderful too. Oh, but yeah. uh, the sugar bakers, um, <laughs> but but the Golden Girls, I watch every night, still every day, every night. And so, bringing it back to Yellow Jackets, just to yeah. a final question: What's this been like for you as a fan and a viewer of the show to to be able to see the the teenage versions of yourself? Because it's like two separate shows. It's like you're this the sets are coming together. What's it been like to to watch the episodes week to week and really experience that like a fan? What do you love about the show? Oh, I love I love watching the show week to week. I'm on Reddit every week. I'm reading the theories. <laughs> I love what people have to say. Um, are you a secret I, I, contributor to Reddit? Oh, uh, I haven't contributed yet. I feel like if I if I contribute, people will know who I am. They'll figure <laughs> it out and they'll be like, ah, I found her. I don't, and so I, 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 I don't, I don't contribute. Not yet, anyway. Maybe I will one day. But uh, uh, I mean, as a fan, it's so cool to see all these different shades of women, you know, on screen and. Um, terrible women that you root for it's that's such a rare thing in television so uh i love watching that and I, god i we never get to see what the youngers are doing you know we never we're separate schedules like you said completely different stages um so it's wonderful to see what they do and i'm always thrilled to see what jasmine brings and to see how it syncs up even if we haven't discussed the episode or that particular moment or whatever to see how the characters sync up the writing is impeccable direction is outstanding i'm a huge fan of the show yeah 
So much fun. Um, I'd love to hear your name shouted out when those Emmy nominations come out this year. <laughs> best of luck to you. The you guys have been so of... nice to me all year. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the entire cast and crew, best of luck to everyone. At Tani Thank Sabres, you, thanks for sitting down and chatting with Gold Thank Derby you, Danny. today. All right, nice to see you again. Mm -hmm.